Hello, my name is Jennifer and I work at the Bell Museum and today we're going to do fish printing with real fish. Now you need some basic supplies. I have more supplies here, but you need some very basic things. You obviously need a fish. It could be a real fish that you caught when you bought at the grocery store. It could even be a toy rubber fish if you have one at home. Um, and then you need some version of color. So I'm going to be using a speedball printing ink. You could also use like a Sumi ink or even acrylic paint works really well. And then you will need a brush, a couple different types of brushes. This is a bristle brush. This is a sponge brush. If you have a piece of sponge at home, you can use that as well. So very simple. Probably the most difficult thing to get a hold of is the paper. You need a soft, very flexible paper. Usually a rice paper works best. This is a mulberry rice paper. It has a soft fuzzy side and then it has a shiny kind of slick side. Newspaper will work as well. You can even do it on fabric if you have like a fabric t-shirt or something like that. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you how to prepare your fish and then we're gonna do a little print. So, and I'll give you a little history along the way. Now I have two fish here. Um, if you catch a fish, you can use that. Um, these were store-bought. One of these fish was gutted, it was cleaned out. This other fish here is whole. So this is a tilapia. So it's all there. Um, all the guts are still in there. This is a mullet, which is actually one of my favorite fish to print, and I'll explain why. And I'm gonna take the mullet out first. And set it down on I have a piece of foam here. This is actually just insulation foam. You don't need to do this step, but it gives you a little bit of a better print. Um, so what you need to do with your fish is you actually, you need to clean your fish really well. You don't wanna take the scales off because the scales are what prints, but you are gonna wanna get the slime off of your fish. And so I just used some dish soap, covered my fish with dish soap, kind of rinsed it all off, took some paper towel, scrubbed it all off so that it's just the scales, there's no slime, and then you wanna make it really dry because any moisture on there is gonna show up in your print. Um, if you have a gutted fish like this one here, it means all of the stuff like the stomach and the heart and all those innards are outside, are been removed, and so that makes the fish kind of flat shaped. So I've actually taken some paper towel, shoved some paper towel in the middle to kind of give it more of a belly shape. Um, you can also, I'm just gonna grab a piece of paper towel here. You can also put paper towel underneath the gills. Just gonna shove it in there. Uh, that helps. Well, to be fair, it wasn't a living creature at one time, so there might be some blood in there. It fills that up. If you want to have the mouth be kind of open, you can. Oh, he doesn't want to. Doesn't want to open the mouth. Not going to be able to do it with this one. Okay, but I can show you on the tilapia. This is a tilapia. So I just kind of push the mouth open a little bit and shove some paper towel in there. So that's the real basic way to prepare the fish. That's all you need to do. We print just like this. In fact, maybe we'll do a print real quick here and then I'll show you how to enhance your print in the next step. So, we need some ink. Um, I suggest going with a dark color, black. Uh, this happens to be a dark blue. And then, your brush, I'm gonna use the bristle brush, I think. I'm gonna use a little bit of water because this is really thick. Just a little bit though. Now this is the really tricky part, especially if you're doing this with kids. Everybody wants to put a lot of ink or paint on their fish. Don't really need to, because um, what you're trying to do is get the impressions of all of the scales. And so I'm just gonna start here at the tail 
very carefully go around. And you're noticing I'm going from tail to head. It takes a little while. You need a little bit more water to do this. So you can go kind of fast. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go faster than I probably would just to give it the right, give some speed here. I will say that often the first impression isn't the best. You'll find out where your spots are that you didn't do a great job on. That's okay. You can actually do several variations of this. So, but this is our first, this is our test subject. So I'm gonna do a quick impression here. Come back to our paint. Grab a piece of rice paper from my stack. I got more than one. Only one. All right, so you wanna make sure, this is kind of the shiny side. This is the soft fuzzy side. So this is what we're going to do first. Um, we're gonna do the fuzzy side. We're just gonna kind of roll it down. I'm gonna hold it on the head there. And then you just gently press across the surface. You'll be able to see a little bit of the scales coming through. Kind of roll it around there. And then you roll it off. So there is our first fish print. So that's pretty good. I see a couple of things um, in here, like maybe I didn't get enough ink, obviously around the edges. Um, there is a little bit of moisture here, so it kind of got kind of a little bit of a blob, but in general, this is really good. And when you see this, the scales, the bigger the scales on your fish, the better they print. So something like a trout makes a really lousy print. So. All right, so now I'm gonna show you kind of some advanced little additions to do to this. So a little history of uh, fish printing while I'm getting this ready. So fish printing originated in Japan. Uh, it is called gyotaku, which means fish impression. Um, and it was a way for fishermen to record the size of their catch so that they got like a trophy fish. Um, they could do that. It also meant that they could make signage to say what fish they caught that day. Uh, it is about 400 years old, maybe even a little bit older than that, um, and has been a very popular um, pastime um, more recently in an artistic community. All right, so here's our next step. Um, one of the things you might have noticed on this one is that other than the tail, there are no fins really on this fish. So we are gonna do the, the fin portion. Um, the fin portion requires that you have something to pin into and obviously some pins. Um, in a tough spot, I've used paper clips, piece of wire. You know, I want, I want you, if you wanna try this, I want you to use whatever you have at home. Uh, if you don't have a piece of foam at home, maybe you have some clay at home clay works really well. You put it under the fins and you can pin right to that. So I am going to pin my fins in place. I'm going to open them up. And just put a pin right in there. Now the mullet doesn't have really big fins. There are other fish that have really big fins, but I'm gonna try to open up this part up here, which has the rays on it. It's different types of pins work better for different things, but use whatever you got. All right, um, might be able to do this one. This one's gonna be a little bit difficult. They're in kind of funny places. I can spread the tail out more a little bit. Hold it in place. Okay. 
If you're going to buy fish from a grocery store, you can buy frozen. Just have to thaw it all the way so that it's a little bit soft and pliable. So now that we've pinned out our uh, fins, we're gonna do another round of ink onto our fish. Um, and let's see if we can get a slightly better print this time. I'm, I'm being really careful about this because if I go over the edge, it's obviously gonna just print the background too. But we'll do another layer of ink on here. I often find that my second, third, or fourth print off of a fish is better than my first one. Now these fish, since they were frozen, their eyes have kind of sunken in, so you actually get a nice eye slot impression. You can also remove the eyes, which gives you a nice round hole, and then you can paint the eye in later. Get our dorsal fins, get our pectoral fins. I'm gonna put some on there. Cover it up. I'm gonna grab myself another piece of paper here. I have a tendency to get ink all over my fingers and you have to be careful about that. You know what? I'm gonna deal with that little piece of where I got a little bit too much moisture. I'm just gonna go in there and dab it up just a little bit first. All right. Oh, which side? Shiny side or soft fuzzy side? Soft fuzzy side. All right. And just gently roll to all the edges. Now you can reach under if you're like me and have another fin down there. Got that other fin here. But you gotta make sure you don't move the rest of it. So that's a really tricky move. <gasps> Which is the advantage of pinning all of your fins in the right spot. Get out there. All right. Let's see if it turned out. Ooh, a little bit better. You can see the fit impressions. I missed a little bit on the nose if I really wanted to. And you can go in and add in the pieces that aren't there. So there you go. That's how you do a fish print. Hope you enjoy. Hope you get to do it at home. Thanks.